Good day everyone! So today I'm going to show you how to perform physical assessment on pediatric patients, particularly on adolescent. So their age group is within 10 to 19 years of age and could further be subdivided into early, middle, and late. Usually for this group of patients, when they come to clinic, they are accompanied by their parents or their relatives. And the most concerning for them is their body image because in this period they are undergoing certain changes that um, affects them and also this is the period wherein they are influenced by their peers so let's get started first thing to remember is to properly wash hands this is to reduce the transfer of microorganisms second is to gather the materials needed this is to save time and energy Third is to introduce name to the patient and to the patient's relative and explain the procedure the way the patient could understand and give some instructions so that the patient know what to expect. By the way, don't forget to call your patient the name they are comfortable to be called with. So for example, Good day, Anastasia. I'm Dr. Magpantay, your clerk doctor in charge for today. So, I'm going to perform physical assessment on you and um, you will just sit down and later on lie down. If there's anything on the procedure that you're uncomfortable with, just tell me so. In this video, I would like to do it systematically. So, I will perform it on the following chronological order. So, our patient is Anastasia, 16 years of age. So, looking at your chart, your vital signs are all normal. Temperature of 36.5, BP of 110 over 70, heart rate of 80, and respiratory rate of 80. So, they are all normal. And looking at your weight, you're around um, 48 kilograms and your height is 5'2". So, I already computed your BMI and it's around 19.5 and it's still normal. When we plot those data on the WHOZ score for girls, the weight for age, height for age, and the BMI are all normal. Before we start, we could ask our patient, Anastasia, is there anything in your body part that you are uncomfortable with or are you in pain right now? This is to assess so that we know where to focus our physical assessment later on. And the good thing in our patient is that she could cooperate and she could answer by her own. We can elicit information from her and we can even instruct her. So for the general survey, using our clinical eye, we can say that the patient is awake, alert, oriented to three spheres, not in distress, well hydrated, well nourished, well groomed, and ambulatory. In head to toe assessment, there are only four methods or techniques that we are going to use. Remember the IPPA, I inspection, P palpation, another P for percussion, and last auscultation. Um, in all, we're gonna follow the IPPA except when we are in the abdomen part, wherein we will start from inspection and then immediately followed by auscultation and then percussion and last is the palpation. For the skin, we're going to use only the inspection and palpation. So inspect the color of the skin and if it is dry and if there are any lesions. And then for the palpation, we're going to actually perform the skin turgor. It could either be on the lower arm or in the abdomen. So as you can see, if I pinch and then release, if it immediately goes back to normal, then there is a good skin turgor. So skin turgor is a sign if the patient is well dehydrated or not. And the usual findings for the skin is... For the head, there are only two techniques that we are about to use. One is inspection and the other one is palpation. For the inspection, we're going to see the color of the hair and then if it is coarse, dry, or brittle, and if it is evenly distributed or if there are areas of alopecia. And for the palpation, we're going to palpate if there is any mass or areas of 
tenderness. Usual findings are the following. For the eyes and eyebrows, it's um, inspection and also palpation. So, inspect if they are symmetrical. And then, for the eyes, inspect for the color of the iris and the shape of the eyes. And then, if there are any pitosis or eye defects such as trabismus. So, for the inspection of the eye, Using our pen light, we will examine if the patient's pupil will constrict upon striking the light. So, so the result will tell us if the pupils are equally round and reactive to light. Another one is with the use of our ophthalmoscope, we will see if there is presence of red orange reflex or if there's none so meaning possibly the patient has cataract or retinoblastoma we will also palpate for the lacrimal gland so from inner to outer and also to note for any pressure around the eye Later on, we will examine the eye more further once we do the cranial nerve test. So, the usual result of the eye is next. For our nose, the methods are inspection and palpation. So, we will inspect the nasal bridge and if there's any deformity. And then, with the use of the pen light, we will see the internal structures in the nose so we can tilt the head a little bit and then see the structures inside also note for any deviated septum and the turbinates and if there's any blockages inside the nose and then also palpate for the sinuses Here are the usual findings for the nose. For the ears, we have inspection and palpation. Inspect if there is any skin tag around the ears. And then inspect also for ear discharges. And inspect for lost set ears. That's indicative of trisomy 21. So inspect for the symmetry. And then with the use of otoscope, we will see the internal structures of the ear. So in this method, since our patient is adolescent, we will pull the pina up and then backward. And then... the internal structures also do on the other side here are the usual findings for the ears for the mouth there are actually a lot of structures especially inside the mouth so we have the teeth the tongue the tonsils the uvula so in this um, assessment we can use inspection and palpation so we will start from the outer so by observing the lips if it is dry or there are some cracks and then going inside, we will instruct the patient to open her mouth. We actually we can use tongue depressor and a pen light to see it further. And then we will observe for the if there's pinkish oral mucosa. And then if the patient's tonsil is not enlarged. And if the uvula is in midline. For the tongue as well and if there's any decay in the tooth here are the usual findings for the mouth next is the neck we have inspection and palpation inspection so we're just gonna observe if there's any neck webbing an indicative of turner syndrome and then for the palpation we will palpate areas of tenderness or if there's any mass and also for the presence of lymphadenopathy. So a while ago, we are already done with the ears. But as we palpate now, we will start from top down. So from the ears, back, and then to the neck. So preauricular, 
post-auricular, occipital, parotid, cervical, submental, submandibular, supraclavicular. And here are the usual findings for the neck. For the chest and lungs, you could actually use all the four methods. Inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. And to do this systematically, we must perform everything in front of the patient. And then after doing all, next is at the back. So that the patient will not be exhausted positioning herself back and forth. For the inspection, we will inspect the symmetry of the chest and if there's any flail chest, barrel chest, pigeon chest, and also the use of accessory muscles if there is any labor breathing. And also, we will inspect for any lesions. Also, in noting for the symmetry of the chest, we can actually place our hands chest area should be symmetrical as the patient inhale and exhale. And then for the palpation, we will palpate if there's areas of tenderness. Next is percussion. Using our two fingertips, we will percuss and listen to each side. the diaphragm and then we will instruct the patient to inhale deeply and exhale we will use the leather format so that we could compare both sides findings for the chest and lungs for the heart so we will inspect if there is a dynamic precordium for the palpation of the heart using the base of our fingers we will feel for the thrills and then for the base of our hands we will feel for the hips and then for the auscultation we will listen to the vital uh, location of each heart sound so for example we will start from the aortic, which can be found in the second ICS. And then pulmonic on the second ICS, left side. And then third ICS is the herbs point. And then fourth ICS is the tricuspid valve. And then the last. So the usual findings of the heart are the following. So now we go to the abdomen. By the way, in this procedure, always remember to drape the patient properly since the abdomen is only what we need, so the rest of the body part should be draped. For the inspection, inspect for the contour and shape of the abdomen if it's globular or flat. And then, also inspect if there is any piercing in the navel. Inspect for any lesions. For the auscultation, imagine that there is an imaginary line dividing the abdomen into quadrants. 
or region to be exact. And then, in those are uh, quadrants or region, imagine the underlying organs beneath. So, as we do our auscultation, we will be able to know which um, organ is primarily uh, having the problem. Next is percussion. Using our fingertips, again, a uh, top in each quadrant. So next is palpation. We will start light palpation and then followed by deep palpation. By the way, don't forget to ask the patient, is there any pain in those areas? Now we go to deep. The usual findings for the abdomen are the following. For the private parts such as breast, genitals, and even the rectal exam, first we need to ask if the patient consents or even the patient parents consent for us to be able to do it so for example there is history of any sexual abuse so assessing the genital part is very vital so we will inspect if there is any hemorrhages any trauma in that area and then of course we will also palpate for any areas of tenderness for the rectal we will also assess if there is any hemorrhoids or bleeding in the anus as a result of a unwanted penetration at this point we could actually assess the tender staging already as um, the vital parts are already exposed now we go to extremities both upper and lower we have inspection and palpation for inspection, we will inspect for any signs of cyanosis by looking at the patient's fingertip. So, we will also inspect for polydactyly or syndactyly. Also inspect for any clubbing of the fingers. And then also inspect for the range of motion and if there's any muscle atrophy. And then for the palpation, we will assess patient's capillary refill so the normal is less than 2 seconds. We will do it by pinching the patient's fingertip and then release and then it should go back to normal immediately. This is the usual findings for the extremities. Examination of the back, we have inspection and palpation. So we will ask the patient to stand up. So we will inspect any deformity. Uh, if there is any scoliosis, kyphosis, or lordosis, we will palpate from the cervical, thoracic, lumbar, spine. If there's any painful areas. So from the usual findings for the back are the following. Now we're done with the head-to-toe -to -toe assessment, we will go to the cranial nerve assessment. So here is the summary of the 12 cranial nerves. In eliciting the DTR, we will use the percussion hammer and the following are the ones we need to elicit. Now we go to the assessment of motor strength and sense. Last is cerebellar and proprioception. Once we are done with our physical assessment, we must thank the patient for her cooperation and then explain what are our findings in the way that she will be able to understand and also the parents and 
explain what are the next steps or procedures to be done and also the date 